Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to do a review that should be a little bit special today. So this one is going to be the Christmas Day 2023 review and I've saved something that I think will be really quite special for this one. So really looking forward to trying this one and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So yeah, for this review... We are returning to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had many different beer styles from these guys, and I would say that they're probably the best all-round brewery in Japan, certainly one of my personal favourites. And the beer itself is a style that we've had from them a good few times before, and it's also a kind of special iteration or a special version of one of their really famous beers, actually. So I think it should be really quite interesting. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching the channel enjoy my take on this one as well. So, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to a little place called Yamanuchi, which is in Nagano Prefecture, to the north of Tokyo, in the Tohoku region. And we're going to have a look then at another beer from Shiga Kogan Beer, who are of course part of the Tamamura Honten Sake Brewery. So, this particular beer is called Takashi in Paris. It comes in at 10.5% ABV. It's an imperial stout, and this particular version of Takashi has been aged in French cognac barrels. So uh, yeah, this should be very, very nice. Now, this is yet another beer that I picked up from liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Amaichi here in Osaka. A uh, lovely little beer shop run by Koji and his daughter Rika. I think Rika's doing most of the work now because Koji's a little bit older. But uh, yeah, it's been one of the mainstays for the craft beer scene here in Osaka for a number of years. So if you find yourself here in Osaka, do go and give them a visit. And uh, they are pretty much my Japanese beer dealers for the channel. So 99% of the Japanese beers that you see here on Rampant Lion Reviews come from there. So yeah, check out their Facebook page in the video description below and you'll see all the interesting stuff that they're getting actually. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. The Takashi in Paris, a 10.5% cognac barrel aged imperial stout from Yamanuchi, Nagano Prefecture in Japan, the Shiga Kogan beer range by the Tamamura Honten Sake Brewery. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Tamamura Honten and the Shiga Kogan beer range before, and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system so just go in there use the little search bar put in your hometown state county province prefecture whatever you like if a reviewed beers from the area that you search for they will pop up failing that you can check out the playlists of beers from different countries you'll find this one in the Japanese playlist along with a number of other things and that is getting added to quite regularly at the moment and you will see other playlists in there as well. So do check out the beers from different countries. There are a lot of really interesting things on the channel these days, but always nice to review some more Japanese beers for you. But let's crack on with this one and see what it has in store for us. On to my brewery notes then to tell you a wee bit about Tamamura Honten and their Shiga Kogan beer range. So the Tamamura Honten company, as I've mentioned to you, is the parent company or the uh, yeah the company behind the Shiga Kogan beer range, if we can call it that. But uh, Tamamura Honten is based in Yamanuchi in Nagano Prefecture in Japan, which is a few hundred k's to the north of Tokyo. And this area is very well known for its ski slopes, its hot springs, and uh, its sake production as well. Actually, the Tohoku region is meant to be very beautiful. It's somewhere that I do need to go and uh, explore a little bit more. But uh, the Tamamura Honten Company began brewing sake back in 1805, and they began their beer operations under the name Shiga Kogan Beer, which translates into English as like the Shiga Heights, Shiga Mountain, or even Shiga Plateau Beer I've seen. And they started brewing under this name in 1998, and they produce wine as well, apparently. But the 
head brewer at uh, Shiga Kogan is Sato Aigo, who joined the company in 2003. Now, the idea to brew beer came when the number of skiers visiting the resort began to dwindle, and so in May of 2004, they applied for their brewing license and they received it four months later. But they bought their brewing equipment and then trained at a brewery for a week in Kyushu before beginning their own commercial activities, and they only had a consultant to help them in those early days. But thankfully, it went very well for them and they're now one of the really well-established craft breweries here in Japan, one of the kind of old heads of the industry, if you like. I mean, uh, when I first came to Japan back in uh, 2015, it was these guys, Isakado, ya, uh, Mino, and maybe and Fuji Zakura Heights were the ones that were the, the first among the first beers that I reviewed from Japan. And all of these breweries have gone on to, uh, you know, from strength to strength. It's really interesting to see. But uh, Tam and Murahontan are very interesting because they produce their own hops, their own sake rice, barley, buckwheat and blueberries. They actually have their own hop variety that they developed called Shinzu Waze. This is a hybrid between Czech Sats hops and also uh, a local variety as well. They originally used it as a bittering hop for lagers, but they also use it as an aroma hop in some of their beers as well. And the brewery have two tasting rooms known as Tepa Rooms. One of these is at the brewery and the other one is at the Shiga Kogan Ichinose Hotel's Shali Shiga. So I'm hoping that I can go and visit these at some point in the future because that would make for a really interesting out and about video in fact. Uh, but the bottle, la uh, the bottle label art that you'll find on these beers is designed by Tanaka Noriyuki and uh, over the years these guys have continued to uh, develop new things. In recent years they've been releasing quite a lot of sour beers and their barrel program is really quite interesting. They do different brew ales, we've had um, different Japanese plum sour beers, uh, they've done a couple of sort of Flanders red type things as well. I think we've reviewed two or three of their sour beers here on the channel and those are definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. They're very, very good, lovely, kind of smooth and uh, sweet sort of thing. So if you like the likes of Rodenbach and stuff, you certainly won't be disappointed with what comes out of the, uh, the sour beer range from Shiga Kogan Beer. But uh, yeah, they've done a lot of interesting barrel aging and uh, their core beers that they have are still very, very solid actually. But as of December 2023, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, these guys have produced 120 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and that number is constantly increasing. But I do hope I can get a hold of a few of their sakes to review for you here on the channel at some point. I think I need to do a, a proper order from this brewery the next time that I come to Japan. So we'll see about making that happen the next time that I'm here. Uh, which will probably be February or uh, or April, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But yeah, um, always cool to talk about Shiga Kogan beer, one of the really old heads of the um, the craft beer industry here in Japan, actually. So uh, yeah, that's everything I can really tell you about Tamamura Honten Company and their Shiga Kogan beer range. If you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done and um, if memory serves me rightly these guys do have an instagram but not a facebook um they're not too active on uh, social media and things like that they're not the kind of youngest of breweries in terms of their staffing which kind of makes sense in this case but uh, yeah, just to tell you a little bit about the beer as well before we actually uh, open this one up. So like I mentioned to you earlier, this one is a 10.5% Imperial Stout. It was aged for 15 months in French cognac barrels and it uses a different malt base and hop bill to the regular Takashis or the previous ones that they've released. And it's also fermented using a Saison yeast. And these are all things that they felt would bring out the, uh, the cognac barrel a little bit more in the, uh, the actual flavor of the beer. So we'll need to see how that, uh, how that plays out. But I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. So there you can see the standard uh, Tamamura Honten Dragon on the front there, which I think is very nice. Um, these labels are pretty cool. I think I'll need to keep this one because this is pretty special, actually. I think there was only one bottle of this left in Koji's and I think it might have been sitting for a wee while. It says that this one was brewed in 2022. Um, so, you know, yeah, it must have been released a few months back. I can't remember seeing this one on the, uh, the Facebook page, actually, at Koji's either. I don't know how many of the beers he puts up on uh, he and Rika put up on the 
the Facebook page, but I don't remember seeing this one on the Facebook page, but when I was in, they had a bottle of it left and I thought, you know, why not? Let's have a look at this. But it's a 330 milliliter bottle. This one, I think, cost me, I think it was about 1200 yen, something like that. So I don't even know what the exchange rate is these days, to be honest with you. But this one was 1200 yen and for, a you know, an Imperial Stout, which I know is going to be good from um, Tamamura Honten, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, craft beer in Japan is a little bit more expensive relative to your cost of living and things, just because, you know, the, the malt tax, basically. But yeah, I'm not going to stop drinking beer in Japan when there's good stuff about. And um, yeah, it's... And I like it, you know, that's the main thing. So, let's get this guy out and into the glass. This is Takashi in Paris, uh, a 10.5% cognac, French cognac barrel aged uh, imperial stout. Having had a couple of the Takashi's, uh, I keep wanting to say Takashi's, having had a few of the Takashi's, um, this is one that I didn't want to pass up the chance to try. So yeah, there we go. All right, and I can tell you, I've only had a little whiff of it. Um, not even looked at it properly, but I think this one is going to be an absolute beast of a beer. Um, so yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect from an Imperial Stout, this one's poured a lovely, dark, ebony, rosewood colour. You can see there's not too much head on this one, which is kind of what you'd expect um, when it's 10.5% ABV and, you know, Stouts tend to lose their head fairly quickly unless they've got a little bit of wheat in them. But yeah, you've got a little bit of a kind of island in the middle of this one, just a little bit of kind of fluffy head. Uh, there's a few little bits of wispy character on the top there, and you can see you've got a nice ring of uh, kind of foam around the edge of the glass there. So some medium-sized bubbles sitting on the surface of the liquid, a few kind of bigger ones just sitting on top of that. And um, yeah, it looks really quite nice. This, as you would expect from an Imperial Stout, this one is pretty much black as night, lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use, that goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel agent you do or any adjuncts you put in can affect the colour of the beer as well. When it comes to black beers like porters and stouts, it's very difficult, pardon me, to affect the colour of the beer uh, using barrel aging because the black malt just kind of dominates basically. But this one does look really nice. If you shine the light through it, you do get a little bit of a very, very sort of dark chestnut colour. There's not a lot in the way of visible carbonation with this one. Just, you know, one or two big bubbles sticking toward um, the side of the glass there. But overall, this does look pretty damn nice, I have to say. I think this looks very, uh, very good and pretty much what you would expect for the Imperial Stout as um, as a style. So yeah, I don't think we can really say much more about the appearance of this one. Um, the head, you know, if you sugar it up, you get a little bit more kind of head out of it on the top there. But it, as I say, it looks exactly as you would expect for the style, so nothing else to say about that. Let's have a wee look at the nose then and see what this one has to offer us. This is a good Christmas day beer. The little guy is, uh, the little guy in Michiko are sleeping. Little guy will be very excited for his Santa presents tomorrow. I stayed up a little bit to film this one and get it uploaded for you guys. But um, yeah, this is an absolute beast of a beer. And it's certainly up there with what I would expect of, uh, of Shiga Kogan. These guys, I know that um, they're held in very high esteem. Uh, Nevit of uh, Japanese craft beer reviews, who reviews Japanese beer more often than me, I'm pretty sure he's told me um, that these, in his opinion, these guys are the best brewery in uh, in Japan. And there's more and more popping up. The Japanese craft beer scene's kicking off at the moment, which is great to see. But you know, Shiga Kogan will be a favourite in in the minds of many, and with good reason. Um, this is going to be special. This is going to be special. Um, so, what I like about this one is that it comes across as like a very old school RIS, Russian Imperial Stout. It has a really nice balance, you'll notice that straight away. You get the barrel in there, that slightly sweeter, smooth cognac barrel. You get a bit of that kind of 
dry but smooth chocolatey character out of this one. You can tell this beer's a little bit older, you know, that kind of silky chocolatey thing you get when the beer's just got a little bit of age on it. You can smell that in there. There's a bit of brown sugar, there's a bit of fruit, and there is still a little bit of kind of green component to this one too. Now, when it comes to Imperial Stouts, there are two things you can do to, to play with these. You know, you can do things like double mash, for example, um, to kind of affect the mouthfeel, or you can, um, you know, you can do a longer wort boil, which is going to give you a kind of more thick and kind of leathery um, sort of note um, when it comes to the brown sugary side of things. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out in the actual flavour. Um, but whenever you barrel age an Imperial Stout, you're always going to sacrifice a little bit of the mouthfeel to get these infused flavours. So um, on a more malty beer, such as the Imperial Stout, these are the kind of factors that you're, uh, you're playing with, of course. But this is beautiful. Let's just break it down and describe the aroma a bit more in depth. So the backbone of the beer is obviously that lovely kind of smooth French oak. Um, so yeah, you can smell that lovely smooth oaky note in there. There's a little bit of vanilla, but of course, as you always get with a cognac, you've got this kind of like datey, pruney, um, plummy kind of fruity character coming out. Um, I know that um, Remy of Beer Geek Holland um, is a big fan of cognac and um, I'm sure if I had time <laughs> to get into cognac I would probably enjoy it as well um, but yeah the aroma of, of you know cognac barrel beers for me is just you know beautiful stuff um, so yeah um, I can see this the, the aroma of these cognac barley spears is just beautiful so you have this lovely woody backbone a little bit of vanilla in there of course and then all these fruity notes from the uh, the cognac spirit which is great so above all of that you start to get this kind of chocolatey cakey um note out the beer it's like a kind of chocolate sponge or chocolate brownie and so above within that you're getting little hints of kind of nuttiness it smells a little bit like Christmas pudding, this beer. Um, and I say that because my mum always used to make my dad Christmas pudding for his birthday in February because he loves it. Um, it just has that sort of, you know, Scottish, English Christmas pudding-y type note to it. So you've got these boozy notes in there. So yeah, kind of chocolate, sponge cake, Christmas pudding, um, that sort of really treacly molasses kind of brown sugary character coming out of it, a bit of nut, like I said. Um, this is really interesting. You get a little bit of, you know, just drier woodiness and things like that out of this one, which will probably be from the Saison yeast. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a little bit of brown sugar in this one. You've got a little bit, you definitely get that kind of treacly molasses note out of this beer, but you also have... Um, <coughs> get that treacly molasses note out of the beer but you also have just this um like sweet caramel there's a little bit of biscuit or something in there as well i think we're going to get a lot more complexity to the actual flavor of the beer um as well i think we're going to appreciate you can smell that it's very complex in the aroma but you're going to get a lot more appreciation out of this one in the actual um flavor than you are the aroma there's so much going on in this but it's it's very much like a kind of really caramelized oily christmas puddingy note that you get out of this one so yeah let's look at the hoppy side of the beer and the fruity side of things then so yeah on the yeah on the hoppy side of things it's um yeah on the hoppy side of things, it's very much like um, you get a good little bit of uh, earthiness in this one. There's a little touch of earthiness in there. You do get little remnants of a floral and grassy sort of thing. But you can tell with this one, when it's been aged for 15 months, um, you know, it's usually hops like Bramling's Cross and, um, you know, there's a few others. Um, there was another one that I had in my head that you can use in these kind of beers. But um, yeah, it's yeah, Bramling's Cross, Northern Brewer, things like that that give you these red fruity notes. Um, Galena is the other one that I was looking for from America. That's a very popular hop to use 
in these Imperial Stouts too. Um, and Kent Goldings, I think, can can work quite well in these. But yeah, um, the, you can just smell that the hoppy character has, the, the green component has kind of dropped out of the uh, aroma a little bit, which you would expect. But the fruity side of this one, we've talked about it a little bit already. You get a lot of kind of sharp raisin out of this, big, big juicy plums and the drier prunes underneath. There's dates in there, there's figs. Um, Blackberry, of course, you get that sharper, more tart blackberry as well. A little bit of black currant, um, aroma wise. This is just really um, interesting for me. I really like how this pieces together. <coughs> My throat's getting a little bit dry. I think it's just with the air conditioners in Japan, that's just kind of how it goes. So I think on that note, um, as I always say, take a bit of time to just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we should have a taste of this one and see what it's all about. So yeah, this is the Takashi in Paris, 10.5%, 15-month co French cognac barrel aged Imperial Stout from uh, Shiga Kogan Beer, part of Tamamura Honten in Yamanuchi, Nagano Prefecture here in Japan. Slanju, Skull, cheers, Kampai, and Merry Christmas 2023. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. That's really interesting. Now, this is one of these um, stouts that's actually quite light in its mouthfeel, but it just has so much flavour into the aftertaste. Yeah, very light in its flavour, but uh, very light in its its mouthfeel, but so much flavour into the aftertaste. That's beautiful. Um, I've had some really, really good beers from these guys over the years, but um, yeah, that's pretty damn special. Yeah. Um, Definitely a very, very good beer for Christmas Day. I'm going to enjoy sipping on sipping on this one before I head off to bed. Um, but yeah, this is one of these ones that shows that thing I've spoken about many times on the channel over the years, that when you barrel age a beer, you're going to lose a little bit of the, the mouthfeel with this one. And you can kind of tell that they focused more on getting the flavours out rather than you know keeping the mouth feel so thick but i think it works it really does work with this beer it's got a lovely kind of drinkability to it but the aftertaste you can tell that they've really just focused on that but the thing you're always going to get up in tohoku uh, and you know nagano uh, prefecture and um, you're always going to have the beers feeling very clean because the the, the water up there um, it's very noticeable and that is another thing that i've mentioned about japanese beer over the years Japanese beer always tends to feel a little bit lighter because, you know, they value their beer being drinkable here. And there is that kind of stereotype with beer in Japan that it is something that, um, beer is something that is used to clear the throat um, to eat. So yeah, you always find your Japanese beers have a, a lighter mouthfeel to them, but this is, this is beautiful stuff. So as I say, it gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah, let's break this beer down and describe it for you more in depth. We'll start on that middle third of the palate in the base. So, the backbone of this beer is, of course, that lovely, smooth and slightly dry French oak. As you move further forward on that... Um, middle third of your palate, you can feel there's a little bit of a, um, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a kind of vanilla type quality in there. And then further back, there's a little bit of a more kind of butterscotchy, butter candy type thing sitting on top of the wood. But within these kind of woody uh, elements, you certainly get that kind of like dry pear, dry sultana, Dainty type flavour from the cognac, you can really feel that 
um, sitting in the woody base that this beer has. So that's really, really nice. Yeah. The way that all of that goes together, I think, is um, it's really very nice. And as I say, it gets a big, um, gets a big thumbs up from me. So, on the, um, yeah, on top of that kind of woody layer then, that's when you start to get the kind of cakey side out of the beer. So you can feel there's almost like a kind of, it's a bit like a kind of bread crusty character, like a, we wouldn't describe it as rye bread, it's not quite like that, but it's also like, you know, the edge of the cake that sticks to the baking tray, it's a little bit like that. So you can feel that in there, then you get a layer of like a kind of dark chocolate sponge cake uh, coming above that, but because of the, what I suspect is, is it's coming from the Saison yeast, within the cake you have this sort of woody, crackery dryness, which is kind of interesting, it's like a little bit of a funkiness almost. Um, yeah, you can feel that within the cakey layer and it comes out especially the further into the aftertaste that you go. Um, and that's really, really nice. So you get this cakey layer, then above that, you get a little bit of a kind of wholemeal, sweet brown bready kind of layer. And then sweet wholemeal brown bready layer. And then above all of that, you get this chocolatey note. And the chocolate is really interesting. It's kind of slightly, it's not charred, but it's slightly dry. You get this dry chocolatey layer, you know, I'd say about 80-90% cocoa. And then above that you can feel there's like a circle in the middle of your palate. And you've got this quite highly caramelised, treacly, molasses sort of thing. And it's quite leathery and usually that indicates a slightly longer wort boil. But in this case with a cognac barrel it could be a, another effect of, uh, of that. So yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, the brown, sh the, the brown sugary character that you get with this one is really quite interesting. You get a wee bit of nuttiness. What you'll find is that down that middle line of your palate, you can feel the brown sugary notes are quite dense and quite treacly, but as you move out toward the edge of your palate, you get a little bit more of this kind of brighter, sweeter caramel. And there's a wee bit of biscuit in there as well, but in the dead center of your palate, there's a little bit of that more concentrated treacle molasses type thing and that's really quite interesting but I think at that we've covered the middle third of your palate and that's where the complexity in this beer really lies so let's go to the back third of your palate then as I've often said the back third of your palate will give you similar flavors just at different intensities but that border region between middle and back third of your palate you can feel a little bit of the kind of, of a sort of sponge cakey base there, maybe a little bit of a more kind of brown bready character, almost rye bready character just sitting above that. But the base of the back third of the palette is the woody character and again it feels a little bit drier if you like. Then you get the kind of fruity layers from the cognac sitting above that. You've got the kind of sponge cakey layer in there as I was saying. Feeling a little bit more dry almost in that back third of the palette but definitely lighter and taller and more airy. Then above that you get the, um, yeah, above that, you get the um, kind of, yeah, above that, you get the more kind of brown bready, you get this kind of brown bready, wholemeal brown bready layer as well, which is taller and more airy too, which I think is great. So, yeah. And then, above that, you can feel some of the drier aspects of the chocolate just kind of creeping over the top there. So you get a wee bit of this kind of chocolatey dryness on the top of that back third of the palate and then you've got some of the yeasty characteristics just sitting above that. And the yeasty side of things for me it's like this kind of doughy, this, this kind of dense doughy ball. So it's like a very sweet brown bread but then around it you've got a more woody, airy, more woody, crackery brown bready character which I think is um, is really interesting 
there. So the that's definitely a kind of saison element coming out of this one. You can really feel um, the saison yeast coming out of this beer, particularly into the aftertaste, but definitely. Back third of your palate, the flavour is taller, and then you can feel as you move into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So, um, yeah, I like it. I do like how that pieces together. So, on to the hoppy side of things with this beer then. So, as I kind of indicated with the... Um, when we were talking about the aroma earlier on, um, the beer for me, it's quite... Um, most of the hoppy character has kind of dropped out of this one, but into the aftertaste you do get a little bit. In the back corners of your palate you've got a little bit of earthiness there. As you move further forward it's got a little bit of herbal character. And as you push further forward toward the uh, front corners of your tongue you'll get the remnants of a kind of floral aromaticity. And around the front curve of your tongue definitely just a little touch lighter and more grassy. 15 months in the barrel a lot of the hoppy character has dropped out of this one. No debating that at all, um, but yeah, I think it does go together very nicely, no doubt about that. Um, on the, yeah, on the um, fruity side of things then, uh, or on the hoppy side of things I should say first, I do wonder if this is Galena that's in here. There could be a few other things of course, but I think it feels like it's more American hop this one, rather than uh, European. So yeah, I would be very curious to know what uh, hop varieties go into this beer. But let's focus on that front third of your palate and the fruity side of things just to round off the flavour profile. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get that little bit of kind of sponge cakey character in the base. Then you get the brown bread above that. The base of this one is like, um, yeah, you get the wood again, the nice smooth wood. You get a little bit of that, um, yeah, you definitely get a little bit of the kind of cognac spirit then yeah the kind of sponge cake and the brown bread and then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer as well so yeah yeah so for me the fruity side of the beer is um Kind of what you'd expect to be honest with you it's almost like um the base of that front third of your palate and um, it's a lot more dry fruity actually when you smell this one you think it's going to have a lot more blackberry black currant and stuff but it's got a lot more dry fruity character to it so it feels as if it almost has like a kind of datey sultana like base so if you go to the back we'll start at the back of that front third of your palate first So yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of the sharper raisin on top, you get juicy plums, but yeah, under that there's a lot of prune, there's a lot of date, and yeah, a lot of sultan, and as you move further forward into the, into the middle of that front third of your palate, you get... Um, Yeah, as you move into the middle of that front, into the middle of that front third of your palate, you certainly get a lot of nice, um, you know, you, you get this kind of like almost pruny. Yeah, you get more of a kind of pruny character, but then it's a little bit figgy as well. And then as you move into the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's like black currant underneath and sharper blackberry on top. It really is lovely. Um, it really is a very, very nicely done beer, this one. This always happens when I have these Takashi beers from uh, Shiga Kogan. I can go on about them for quite a while, but I think that is everything we need to say about the flavour profile of this one. So let's just round off with a wee look at the mouthfeel with this. So as I said earlier, this is quite a light stout in terms of its body. I mean, I think calling this one mid-bodied wouldn't even be out the you know out of the ordinary it's this one is one of these beers where it's more about the aftertaste so yeah i think mid bodies it feels very clean probably because of the the nagano water 
uh, and also the barrel is going to lighten up the mouthfeel so much that that amplifies the effect. Um, not a lot of carbonation in this one, it's very smooth, very clean, as we said, IBU wise, it's a bit difficult to place because with this kind of beer you could easily conflate dryness with bitterness, but I think it's roughly about you know 50, 60 IBUs ish. But there's dryness in there, which is more kind of long lasting. So yeah, that's maybe maybe that the bitterness is lower, but it's the dryness that's giving you a lot of this impression. So yeah, quite dry into the aftertaste, but you get a nice bit of sweetness out of the beer and quite a dry sweetness at that. Um yeah, um the malty character, as we said. It's a bit dry underneath, smooth in the middle, a little bit sweeter on top. You get a little bit more of an oily sweetness out of the beer. The fruitiness is all about those dry fruits. A little bit of sharper fruit on the end. And uh, yeah, the green component is still kind of there, but not overly visible, if that uh, that at all makes sense. So um, yeah, um, lovely, lovely beer, this one. Very different from the other Takashi's that we've had. Um, but try and, you know, it's quite different, but equally as good. I would say this one's more about the aftertaste than anything else but beautiful beautiful beer and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so I think we can leave it at that for uh, for this one so yeah this was my Christmas Day review 2023 as always happens with some of these uh, Shiga Kona Imperial Stouts that went on for a bit longer but yeah this was the Takashi in Paris 10.5% uh, ABV uh, a special version of Takashi with different malt base, different hops, a saison yeast, and then aged in French cognac palace for 15 months. Beautiful beer, uh, definitely worth what I paid for it. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from Shiga Kogan Beer, and we will be returning to these guys again at some point in the fairly near future. But until then, Slanja, Skull, cheers, Merry Christmas, Kampai, and I'll see you guys in the next video review. Ciao just now.